The Saudization or Nitaka system in Arabic requires Saudi private companies to allot a certain number of jobs exclusively to Saudi nationals. This policy aims to improve the kingdom's employment in order to cope up with its unemployment problem. Saudization is expected to hit more than 1 million Filipinos in Saudi Arabia to date. Serious repercussions of Saudization include the safety of Filipinos in case arrests happen and the loss of about $7 million coming from the OFW remittances from Saudi. Some OFW watch groups believe that the government's help is too little too late and is nothing but a token. Malacanang, however, said that the Saudization will have a limited effect and that there are jobs awaiting OFWs coming back home. Welcome to Opposing Views, a hard, straightforward discussion of today's most pressing issues. Saudization has left very little room for our overseas Filipino workers in Saudi Arabia. We see their exodus going back to the Philippines. Now, the so-called tent city within the Philippine embassy in Jeddah is a clear picture of the sad plight of OFWs struggling to earn a living. Now that the deadline has passed, what's left for our modern heroes in Saudi? So we asked tonight, is the government ready for the effects of the so-called Saudization? Good evening, I'm Rod Nepomuceno, and this is Opposing Views. All right, joining us tonight in our discussion is Albert Valenciano, direct for, Director for of the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration. Uh, good evening, Albert. Uh, good Director. evening, Rod. Uh, yeah. This is a pleasure for me to be here uh, to discuss uh, this very important topic on Saudization. All right. What is your quick uh, take on uh, Saudization? Well, uh, they say that uh, it's going to be a big problem for Filipino workers in Saudi Arabia, but I, I think uh, we have to make uh, certain qualifications about uh, this uh, big issue which now uh, affects our Filipino workers in Saudi Arabia. and this. Uh, uh, forum is, I think, uh, an opportunity for us to uh, clarify certain uh, things about Saudization. All right. Thank you. And with us also is uh, Mr. Gary Martinez, Chairman of Migrante International. Uh, good evening, Gary. Good evening, Rod. Good evening, Albert. Yes. Ano yung uh, quick take mo on, on uh, the Saudization? No? Yung, uh, yung, I think the new policy of uh, Saudi Arabia uh, to provide more employment for, for their nationals. Eye opener. Mm. for the Aquino government to review its policy sa labor yeah. export. Uh, hindi na natin pwedeng iyasa pa ang kabuhayan ng ating mamayan sa iba pang bansa. Alright. Okay. So, uh, let's start off. No? Uh, just a quick um, summary of Saudization. Uh, perhaps I'll, uh, uh, we, can, we can ask you, uh, Albert. No? I can call you Albert, yes. no? Director Albert. Okay, okay. Um, Saudization uh, is basically a policy issued by the Saudi government to increase the number of employment slots uh, in, in, in Saudi Arabia for Saudi nationals, correct? And, uh, and therefore, this will displace a lot of our Filipino workers. Uh, so is this, um, so there seems to be a crackdown now on OFWs. Um, would you say that our OFWs are in danger of uh, being displaced because of Saudi Asia? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I think we'd like to uh uh, to say that Saudization is really something that has been uh, uh, implemented by Saudi Arabia, not, not even uh, in 2006, but earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, but the difference is that uh, before 2006, uh, Saudization was some kind of a policy mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, placed a uh, quota, a general quota, on all foreign workers. Like, for example, uh, uh, they might say at that time, 30% uh, Mm. Uh, uh, of uh, the, the limit for foreign workers in Saudi Arabia should be 30 percent. All right. For any industry? Yeah? Across, for across, across. Uh, the Saudi economy. Okay. All but right. in uh, 2006, what they did was to refine the policy by saying uh, it depends on the industry where you are. Mm. Uh, so you have different quotas uh, for Saudi Station, uh, let's say for the construction industry, right. the banking sector. So the, it's going to be industry-based. It's going to be industry-based. Mm -hmm. And then also depends on the size of the company. Mm -hmm. It could be a small, medium size, or the big company. Right. So, so that's the, the basic difference. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, what we are now experiencing as uh, what you say as crackdown is actually uh, focused more on the uh, TNTs. No? No. Uh, so in Saudi Asia of 2006, for example, focused on 
the legally employed workers in Saudi Arabia. Right. Uh, it was uh, the intention of, uh, well, uh, the Saudi government trying to uh, uh, employ more workers for the private uh, sector of Saudi Arabia, uh, but not at the expense of the Filipinos and other national, uh, foreign mm. nationals in Saudi Arabia, because they still uh, had to honor the uh, existing contracts Contrast. at that time. They, they couldn't just lay off the uh, So you're the saying workers. that the, the crackdowns were mainly for the illegal For the workers? illegals this All time, right. yes. Uh, okay. let, let, no. let me clarify, yeah. Gary, no. um, your thoughts on this? <clears throat> Wag natin tawagin mismo yung mga kababayan natin undocumented. Mm. First, they are legally employed. Mm. They are legally processed by POEA. Mm. They get all the permits. They have an employer. Mm -hmm. Na-abuse sila, maltreated at tumakas. <clears throat> Dapat doon pa lang, wag natin i-declare. Because once we declare a Pilip Filipino workers undocumented, very clear, binigyan natin ng lisensyang hulihin sila. Mm. Paano ka hindi tatakas kung 18 hours ka nagtatrabaho? hindi ka pinakakain, mm -hmm. tatakas yan. So, the employer taga, ire-report ka ng tumakas. Okay. Pero dapat, yung circumstansya ng pagtakas niya, hindi dapat siya ito rin. So, you're saying, wal walang, walang OFW doon na illegal, meaning who just went there, looked for a job there, and uh, and did not go through the pro the, the government's processes? Walang, walang ganun? Napakahirap pong kumuha ng tourist visa sa Saudi. Okay. Mostly yung business visa. So, Kaya malinaw yun yung marami po tayong kababayan na na dyan, yan po ay legally recruited ng mga accredited ng POEA at dapat po talaga hindi sila tinatagya ang documented. Alright, so, um, Robert, the, 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 the point uh, taken by, by Gary uh, is that there's no re really illegal workers. Like, illegal workers lang sila because they were re removed or they left because of harsh conditions and so went to another company which wasn't the company that sponsored them. Um, yeah. Can you clarify that? Uh, yes, uh, Tama, uh, Rod, I think uh, the point of uh, Gary uh, is uh, well taken. Uh, when they left uh, the Philippines, they were they processed were legal. uh, legally. Uh, they are documented. Ang problema kasi dyan is, yeah, for whatever reason, I uh, mentioned ni uh, Gary kanina, uh, uh, which caused the, or prompted the, our Filipino worker to uh, leave the sponsor and mm -hmm. then look for another job. So, do, do but, 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 uh, yes, in, in that sense, yung pong trabaho niya ngayon na bago, it's actually illegal because uh, Saudi Arabia, pag lilipat ka ng uh, employee, it has to be through uh, a, a legal process mm -hmm. of transferring to another yung employee. Yung problema right? natin, yes. once yes, na pumasok tayo do sa kafala system, sa mm -hmm. sponsorship mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. kung may labor, uh, bilateral labor ano tayo, agreement with the Saudi government, mm -hmm. dapat ito rin to as employer at hindi siya sponsor. Kaya pag nagka-problema, yung sponsor, dadalihin ka talaga niyan sa legal technicalities. Mm -hmm. At yun po magbubulid do sa ating kababayan na maging undocumented siya. Dapat talaga yung scrap yung kafala system. Alright, should, should the, should the uh, OFWs be worried about Saudization? Itong, at least this kind of Saudization as you define it, no, na they're, they're out to, to displace our Filipino workers. Should we be alarmed? And uh, is, is, is this something that uh, is a, a threat to uh, overseas uh, employees? Sa isang Pilipinong walang trabaho rito at ito lang ikabubuhay, threat sa kanya, economically yan, ano? Mm -hmm. Pero dapat tingnan din ng gobyerno na kung ayaw na natin harapin to na ang ating mga kababayan ni Nadia sa Saudi na parang um, mga hinahabol na lamang ng mga otoridad, eh, pag-isipan natin <coughs> yung pag-create na mas maraming trabaho dito dahil yung Saudi naman ay pangalawa, ano po, sa pinakamalaking nagre-remit na remittance dito sa ating bansa. Yeah. Now, Albert, did we prepare uh, for this? This was uh, promulgated in 2006, this Saudization policy. Did we, did we uh, anticipate this and uh, make sure that uh, our Filipino overseas workers in Saudi Arabia are protected? Uh, well, Rod, uh, what I can say is this. Uh, uh, the effect of uh, the 2006 uh, uh, order on the Filipino workers is not that big. Like. Uh, if you look at the, the record of people uh, being uh, uh, taken out of jo their jobs and uh, being sent home, hindi po naman ganun karami. No? So mm. in other words, it was manageable because... What numbers are we looking at here? I mean, well, I don't have the exact figures, yeah. no, but uh, it's not really true that uh, uh, the Saudi Asia of 2006 uh, Ang resorted to uh, mm. a massive layoff mm. of Filipinos mm -hmm. or for that matter, other nationals mm -hmm. uh, working in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Arabia. Uh, ngayon, um, yung pong nasabi kanina ni, uh, ni Gary na uh, dapat yung nga sponsorship system ay tingnan. Uh, we, we subscribe to that idea that uh, maybe it's about time for the Saudi government to uh, re-examine uh, their uh, 
uh, rule on sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Kasi sa kanila, talagang you, you'll be tied to the sponsor. Mm -hmm. But uh, during the correction period nga naman, uh, which ended in November, uh, November 3, ay nagkaroon naman ng pagkakataon ng ating mga workers. They have to correct first uh, the kind of uh, work that they have mm -hmm. uh, para po mag -match. So may correction period? May correction yeah, they, period. that's what they yeah. call the correction period that ended, uh, as you said, uh, last November 3. Yes. And then uh, they were also given the time to transfer to another employer mm -hmm. without the consent of their current employer. But mm -hmm. during the uh, uh, correction uh, period. Yes, Ayun, okay. natapos na po yung correction uh, period. Uh, with uh, the Philippine government uh, tried to request for another extension. Kaya alam mo kang hindi na tayo pinayagan. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, our reports uh, say that since November 4, wala po pa naman na apprehend since November 4. na Pilipinos right. uh, because of uh, mm -hmm. this problem. Okay, so, I throw the question. Yung, uh, yeah. sa, sa, ano lang, no, sa Arab News <coughs> yesterday, there are around 600 Filipinos have been arrested outside the Jeddah consulate sa mm -hmm. 10th city. There are 12 buses. Mm -hmm na tinransport sila sa isang uh, immigration facilities or center na ipaprocess ang kanilang deportation. Okay. Kaya dapat makumpirm ito ng Philippine government kung sinasabing wala pa na apprehend, pero malinaw po sa Arab News that 600 Mayroon. Mayroon. women and children have been apprehended. Now, so, this might be a rhetorical question. Uh, are, are you satisfied now the Philippine government's no. processing the papers, <laughs> provide health care and uh, financial and even, <clears throat> even repatriation process? Are, are, are you satisfied or not satisfied? Uh, sa or, totoo lang, hindi. Ano, uh, ani man namatay during hmm. sa 10th City, may violent dispersal na naganap sa Riyadh, sa ating embassy, no, nakapila sila po hanggang 2 a.m., na-disperse sila. Mm -hmm. Nagkaroon ng malakas na pag-ulan dyan, na-wash out yung mga tents, tents, pero ang Philippine Embassy sarado. Kaya nga, ang tanong ko, eh, bakit si Ambassador Tago nga, ano, dapat sa dami ng reklamo po sa kanya, dapat pinauwi na yan. Eh. Mm -hmm. Marami ng palpak. Pero, mm -hmm. yung pong nangyayaring krisis sa uh, Saudi, yung nangyayaring crackdown, ay talagang hindi na paghandaan ng gobyerno. Ang ginawa nila ay wait and see ang attitude, ang kanilang palisiya. At malinaw po yan. Hindi po hmm. sana matatambakan tayo ng hmm. nahigit liman libos outside sa Philippine Consulate hmm. kung natrabaho po talaga yan ng ating mga opisyales. At uh, yeah. si, ano po, si, si Consul General Garibay, uh, taga, hindi po katanggap-tanggap ang yung sinabi, na huwag tayong mag-alala na sa kulungan dahil malaki ito at may aircon. Mm -hmm. Sila po ay mga biktima na maltrato kahit po isang minuto, mm -hmm. wala sila dapat oh, sa kulungan. Albert, uh, mal maltreated daw and uh, of course, uh, there are people outside pa, yung mga tent city nga, no? and, uh, um, and generally there's a, a general dissatisfaction mm -hmm. on, uh, on the, the processes being made. Uh, how do you address that? Well, uh, I'm not really sure about yung po na pick up na sinasabi ni, uh, ni Gary, but what uh, we uh, know is that uh, November uh, 3rd uh, came and went, but kung yung pong ating kababayan ay nakapagsimula ng proseso, either para maka na siya o kaya makalipat nga sa ibang uh, employer hmm. within that period, basta nakapagsimula siya. And uh, there is naman documentation to that effect that uh, uh, he really wants to go home hmm. or that he is intent on transferring to another employer to, to correct uh, his uh, profession or uh, status as a worker ay hindi naman talaga sila huli in. Basta nakapagsimula sila. Right. Maybe uh, we can check on the, the veracity that. of that uh, report uh, right. on Arab News. Yeah, maybe we can uh, verify that. No? Yes. Now, uh, at this point, uh, we need to take a short break. Uh, and uh, at this point also, let's see the viewers' opinion through our online poll. Our question is, is the government ready for the effects of the so-called Saudization? The results, yes, 60%, and no, 40%. Join the discussions online, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash solar opposing views. Follow us also on Twitter at opposing underscore views. Use the hashtag OV Saudization. We'll take a short break. More issues about Saudization when opposing views returns. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views. Still with us, uh, Albert Valenciano, Director 4 of the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration, and Gary Martinez, Chairman of Migrante International. We're asking tonight, is the government ready for the effects of the so-called Saudization? Uh, Gary, um, let me ask again. Do you think may long-term effects tong uh, 
Southeast Asia na to. I, I, you think that parang nagsisimula pa lang ang effects and eventually talagang maraming madidisplace na, na OFW? Huwag na natin pag-usapan po yung numbers. Pero do sa sinasabi nilang initial na napauwi ng government, 4,300. Mm -hmm. Ang long-term effects dito, do sa pamilya. Eh. May titigil mag-aral, pala silang trabaho rito. Mm -hmm. Sabihin natin, hindi yan makikita sa kabuan. Pero yung epekto niya sa pamilya, ramdam na ramdam po yan. Kaya nga nung papasok, ano nga ba tagang kahanda ng gobyerno to absorb those have been repatriated sa Philippine society, sa labor force. Mm -hmm. At tandaan natin, 4,300 ay lalaki pa yan kung talagang titignan na natin itong massive na effect ng global economic crisis na ngayon ay nangyayari. Ang Southeast right. Asia ay mayroong mga iba-ibang version. Sa Europe, mayroong Europe di, ano, written directive. Sa mm. Korea, mayroong silang voluntary uh, repatriation. Mm. Magkakaiba yan, pero sa totoo lang, epekto yan ng mas malaking krisis. At titignan natin din yung pagpasok at pagbalik ng mm. ating mga kababayan sa loob ng bansa. Yes, this issue. So, uh, Albert, no, the, the issue of reintegration nga, yun yung long-term effects na kita niya. So, right now, we have 4,300 uh, employees who came back. No? How does the government uh, address that? Uh, obviously, it's not just a matter of giving them money. And, yeah, uh, but uh, we would like to believe naman, uh, Rod, that uh, these are, most of them uh, at least, these are uh, skilled, uh, experienced workers. So, mm -hmm. siguro naman, uh, with all the uh, services available to them uh, by government, by the Department of Labor, baka naman, uh, they would be able to uh, find uh, jobs locally mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, but is there, their is there a pro, more proactive way of helping yung parang, you know, of course, you're, what you're saying is essentially, uh, siguro naman may programs dyan, but is there a speci specific programs for these who were, who were repatriated back because of, uh, as, as mentioned, the Southeast Asian, uh, effect of Southeast Asian? Yes, uh, we have a facility at the Department of Labor. This is being uh, supervised by the Bureau of uh, Local Employment. Yung pong uh, field job net nila, which is online, mm -hmm. uh, matching of uh, the... Uh, uh, the uh, demands of uh, local industry and uh, the qualifications of the uh, workers concerned. Mm. So that's one. There's also uh, upgrading uh, courses uh, which is offered by TESDA, for example. They call it uh, uh, training workers for, for work, no? which is a scholarship program. They also have a skills assessment and certification, uh, all of which are uh, intended to uh, uh, certify us to the uh, skills uh, set or mm -hmm. level of the, the workers. So I believe that since uh, the workers have been there for a long time, uh, I believe so, and uh, they have already uh, mm -hmm. uh, acquired uh, a lot of experience mm -hmm. uh, on the job. Mm -hmm. I, I think they will be, uh, be productive uh, workers. Place. The, the government plans to, to transfer uh, OFWs from, uh, from one job uh, or another prof from one profession in case they are affected by Saudi Asia to another job. Uh, that, won't, this, won't they be arrested if uh, they're found to be working for employers na, that did not sponsor them, they were not their visa sponsors? Well, uh, this, uh, when you say the government, it's actually uh, uh, the, uh, the Saudi government that uh, has to, to be on the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, and this happened during the correction period, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, one uh, a worker can transfer to another employer during mm -hmm. the correction period, even without the consent of the current uh, employer. Mm -hmm. But right now, uh, since the correction period has elapsed, then uh, the uh, Saudi government has to, uh, mm. uh, to en enact whatever uh, policy it has. No? Or to resume, to resume uh, right? the, their uh, efforts yeah. to uh, cleanse the ranks of uh, the workers in mm. the private Gaya, sector. Well, Gaya, from what you know, but may nag benefit ba from uh, government services or government efforts na napatransfer sila from one employer to another? Uh, according to the uh, Philippine Embassy uh, website, the thousands of them have been uh, assisted yeah, and transferred to, other, uh, yeah. transferred to other employer. But the mere fact, the problem is, paano nga ba sila maproteksyonan? Kasi it will not answer yung good cause, eh, yung mm -hmm. abuse. Dapat yung ating uh, pag-exercise ng pagbibigay ng protection dapat yung nadoon. Yun yung kinukulang eh. Kahit may transfer natin sa sa maayos, hanggang kailan magiging maayos ang kondisyon. Hmm. Dapat may palisiya talaga na once na may tumawag, nag-distress call yung OFW, na matter of 24 hours, bigyan siya ng protected hmm. custody. At yun yung problema natin sa Saudi. That's why... Do you think, do you think nabubuli tayo ng mga, ng mga uh, Saudi? Tingin ko kasi yeah. for ano, ano, long period of time, wala nga tayong ginagawa na diplomatic protest. Wala tayong ma-persecute. Ilan mm. lang eh, may bibilan natin sa dalire. Yung the last time na manalo tayo mm. ng more than a million pesos na i-award sa OFW, pero isa lang yan sa libong mga kaso na na-abuse. Kaya tingin ko, yung, uh, yung protective custody, 
ay dapat may exercise. Tapos yung budget, ano? Hmm. Ang legal assistance fund natin from the DFA, uh, kung kailangan natin ng 10,000 US dollars to hire a good lawyer. But sa reality, the Philippine government allotted only uh, maybe 200 US dollars, 300 US dollars. Hmm. Na maximum yan. Hmm. Kaya problema yun, legal assistance dapat doon. Hmm. Uh, sayang yung so, 1.3 trillion. Albert, you, I think uh, we, we can still improve on this, uh, on this uh, protection, yeah, legal, yeah, legal um, aid. Yung, oh. Well, uh, Gary talks about protective custody, but again, we have to be realistic uh, right? because uh, our workers uh, work outside of the country where you have uh, different legal uh, processes. Like mm. For example, in Saudi Arabia, uh, they have uh, uh, this rule that uh, if you have a complaint, uh, the first thing that you do is you, you talk with the employer. Mm -hmm. If it uh, doesn't help, then you have to uh, submit your yeah. complaint to so the... Pero uh, pag ginahasa na, pero kailangan bang talk to your employer kung employer yung gagasa? Uh -huh. May kaso tayo niyan eh, si mm -hmm. Joan Sarto. Buhay, tumawag, nag-distress call. Hanggang sa pinatay siya, inuwi siya may saksak. Mm -hmm. Paano tayo papasok doon na nire-respeto natin ang batas ng isang bansa, pero hindi naman nila nire-respeto yung batas natin, yung kultura rin natin. Hindi ko sinasabi, i-violate natin yung batas. Pero the mere fact na may distress call, kailangan na dyan. Kasi hmm. alaw naman sa international convention sa, hmm. na pag ang host country ay may hinuli, hmm. supposedly yung Philippine naman siya will yeah. inform. Kung may, distress, 24 mm, hours, kung may distress call ba, what do you know? Well, what that's the, the different kasi I was talking about a, a case where uh, it has to be submitted to the proper authorities. But in this case, tama yung sinasabi niya, it's a distress call then. Uh, what again, is the protocol there? What is the process? Well, uh, either that uh, we uh, um, coordinate with the local police so that we can uh, uh, get hold uh, Mm -hmm. uh, take custody of the uh, Filipino mm -hmm. and then bring uh, her or So ideally her ganun yan pero I guess hindi nangyari hindi nangyari for that. Yung kay Joan is talagang Sarto. very sad ano na after after a week na pinatay siya ng employer niya at yeah. nawi natin dito ng bangkay. Ito yung mga case na dapat uh, pagtuunan din ng pansin mm -hmm. ng um, ng Department of Foreign Affairs at Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. Problema kahit nung dalawang mm -hmm. dalawang ahensya ng gobyerno ito pag nasa labas may iringan din eh. Oh, okay. Nawi-witness namin yan ano Supposedly, talagang trabaho ng, um, ng consular yan, papasa pa naman sa, sa dole. In fairness naman po sa dole. Pero, na may pack, dapat, one team counter approach yung ano nila, policy right. nila. Okay. Eh, problema din, di disintegrate yan eh, right. sa crisis mm -hmm. eh. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about, uh, finally, no? uh, uh, because we have very, very limited time, I want to talk about this 2 billion pesos that was allotted uh, for the reintegration of these uh, workers who, uh, who are being displaced. Uh, there is a 2 billion peso allocation, uh, is that correct? Yeah, to right. help uh, them but we have to clarify that this is for the members of OWA. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is done uh, through the facility of uh, the Land Bank of the Philippines. Members of OWA meaning those who are uh, yung registered pong, employees? Uh, yes, th those who are uh, whose employers have uh, uh, contributed to the OWA fund. All right. Okay, now, do you, do you think this is enough, uh, Gary, itong 2 billion uh, pesos? 2 billion, yeah. una, hindi siya tulong, utang. Maliniwanag, may interest. Second, yung nga, yung pag, yung pag ano dyan na, sa member lang ng OWA. Hmm. De, tignan natin, itong mga taong ito ay naalis na ng trabaho dahil minal trato. Hmm. At maaari hindi na pag-renew. Hmm. So problema yun, nung time na nagbabayad sila at di nila kailangan ng uh, beneficyo ng OWA o ng tulong, ay hindi nila nagamit. Hmm. Bakit ngayon na kailangan nila mapagkakaitan? Uh, dapat, itong mga Pilipino na naapektuhan na ng anuman, gera yan, gutom, sakit, o ito, yung Saudi Station, ay dapat yung bigyan ng gobyerno ng tulong at diutang. 1.3 trillion ang nasa pork barrel ng presidente, yung DAP niya. Ibigay na ito, wala nang pagtatangi, baka sabi na naman, hindi naman doll out ang gobyerno, doll out nga sila sa fake NGO, dapat itong mga bagong bayani na ating tinatawag, tulungan na yan ng gobyerno, huwag magtatangi. All right. Uh, unfortunately, that's, that's all the time that we have. Uh, thank you very much to our guests, uh, Mr. Albert Valenciano, uh, and uh, Gary Martinez, all right? Now, let's take a final look at our uh, online poll. Our question is, is the gov government ready for the effects of the so-called Saudization? The accumulated votes from all our online platforms, the results, yes, 55%, and no, 45%. And that's our opposing views for tonight. Tune in again next week for another bold and engaging discussion on the most relevant issues of today. I'm Rod Nepomuceno. Good night and God bless.